Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I also arise to support this um, uh, committee's report. And uh, I note that this position requires a very sober individual who is qualified, experienced, and understands the rule of law and democracy. In fact, one of the things I think they need to understand is, is the, the independence and the interdependence of the three arms of government. The legislature, which makes the laws, the judiciary, which uh, implement, you know, uh, interprets the law, and then the executive, which, which uh, enforces the laws through the police. Mr. Speaker, as um, this new Inspector General takes up office, I want to advise that he make sure that he respects the rule of law, respect the judiciary, make sure that if there are any court summons, you respect them. Because if in that office you don't respect the courts, then Kenyans may also start disrespecting the courts. And when that happens, that becomes anarchy. The second issue, Mr. Speaker, is that the new Inspector General must also respect other arms of government. For example, Parliament. We have seen in the past where Inspector Generals arbitrarily withdraw security of members of Parliament. We've seen recently one withdrew the security of a judicial officer, not understanding that the nature of the job that we do requires for us to have that security because it is also sensitive. And finally, make sure that this thing of gangland abductions and killings of Kenyans stops once and for all. Because this has been a story we have sung, a, a song we have sung for a long time. We have had inspector generals come and go, and we still continue killing our Kenyans. As we are talking now here, there are still Kenyans that are missing, Mr. Speaker. It is important that when he takes up office, he gets to the bottom of what is happening to those Kenyans that are lost since that time when our youth came out to demonstrate and ask for better governance. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Bure, bure. Asante, Bwana Speaker, kuhunifana fasi hii. Yangu ni kusupport komitia ambaye iliyotekeleza haya mambo kwa sababu Mr. Kanja ni mtu tunamuelewa sisi wa Kenya. Mr. Kanza, Kanja ukiangalia wakati alikuwa kwa GSU, yeye mwenyewe ndiye alikuwa anazuia upande azaa upande wa Meru, Tigani ya West, Egembe Central, Egembe North wakati wa vita ya ngombe. Na yeye ni mtu ambaye ukimpigia simu wakati wa wote hata kama na namba yako hanechukua langu ni moyo peke yake ni kusema kwamba katika kitengo wa polisi watu wengi wa polisi wengi wanaangaika ukiingia wazazi kwa nyumba ya polisi ukiingia ukiingia wazazi kwa nyumba ya polisi polisi wawili wanasia nyumba moja na ni room moja na wako na familia na hiyo ya kwamba kanja tukimweka akiweka ndani wazazi akiingia pale kanja ataweza kuinua polisi. Ingine ni hii. Kule kwetu nyumbani ama kwa hawa nyumbu naona hapa hivi. Nyumbani kule kuna mbuzaa ya kutosha na pombe ya kutosha. Pale polisi wale wale kwa upale, wazaizi wakisika pombe, hapeleki polisi, hapeleki kotini. Ile na baki pale polisi station wale ambaye amesikwa iti ya kwamba yeye mwenyewe apeleki kumani popote ni mtasema kwamba kanja akipata hii ya kwamba atatimisha ile wajibu. Ingine ni hii. Kanja tasema kwamba sio mtu Mount Kenya. Kanja ni Mkenya, Kanja ni Mjalu, Kanja ni Mluya, Kanja ni Mkamba, Kanja ni Mmeru. Ya kwamba sio kusema kwamba tukimpa Kanja atakuwa akisema mambo mlima. Hakuna mambo mlima kwa Kanja, Kanja atakuwa ni Mkenya mzalendo ambaye anapenda kila mtu. Asante bwana speaker. Kwa kunipa nafasi. Madenge. Thank you Mr. Speaker. I rise to add my voice to the support of uh, Douglas Kaja's ap uh, appointment as the Inspector General of Police. Douglas Kaja comes as a very, very experienced Kenyas in, Kenyan in this position. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, I want to add my voice to the expectations that Kenyan, Kenyans have on the, new, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, nominee for the position of uh, Inspector General. The number one, President William Luto, in his wisdom, gave, gave uh, the Inspector General of Police functional autonomy and also financial autonomy. We expect that the welfare of our policemen will, will be at the forefront of Mr. Kaja's uh, uh, initiatives in reforming the police into a police service. Mr. Speaker, more importantly, is that this house has played its role 
in ensuring that it is the House that has the final say on the appointment of uh, uh, the nominee, Mr. Speaker. And therefore, the claim by certain quarters that they are the people pushing uh, Douglas Kaja's appointment must be put to rest by the House, Mr. Speaker. I wish Mr. Kaja well, as uh, he's cleared by, if, uh, even when he's cleared by this House, but he must know that we have a lot of expectation on him to really, really meet the desires and the wishes of Kenyans in as far as the police service is concerned. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I support. Lagdera. Member for Lagdera, Abdukadil. Okay, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me the opportunity. Uh, I rise to support the nomination of uh, Mr. Kanja to, the, to, the IG, to be the IG of, uh, of National Police Service. Mr. Speaker, I have interacted with Mr. Kanja several times on security issues and the constituency, and he has been very responsive. This is a gentleman who will call at 10 p.m., and he will pick your call, and he will listen to you, and they will help you in case of any problems. And if you want to know him, you will look at his uh, wealth, wealth declarations. He's a modest man, somebody who has gone through the ranks from police uh, from, 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 from constable to IG, and now what he's declaring, just modest. For another person, for another Kenyan, I think that person will have been a billion now. He declared for six million as his wealth. That itself tells you Mr. Kanja is a man of integrity. Therefore, I think the nomination of Mr. Kanja is, uh, is, very, is, 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 is very important because at the, for now, I think we'll have somebody with integrity, with experience, with somebody who has gone through the uh, ranks of police to at the top, and somebody who understands the challenges of each and each and every cadre of the police service. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I support. Nice, Ola. Speaker, I also do rise to support the appointment of the nominee, uh, Mr. Kanja, for the position of the Inspector General of Police. And I speak as someone who has worked closely with him when he was in charge of GSU, Mr. Speaker, and he's the one who introduced the National Police Reservists in the North Rift, Mr. Speaker. I remember when we had issues in Samburu West constituency, Mr. Speaker, he got out of the office, we went round with him to the field, he saw the challenges that we were going through, Mr. Speaker, and he's the one who then recruited and ensured that NPRs were brought to, into place, Mr. Speaker. We need an Inspector General, Mr. Speaker, who will get out of those conditioned uh, air-conditioned offices and go to the ground and go and see what is going on. And I can attest that Mr. Kanja is one such gentleman who listens to issues raised by members of parliament from experience and I have no doubt in my mind that he's going to deliver. And we need to ensure that we pass him very quickly so that the acting IG can be relieved of his services because we're not very happy with what he's doing in the country, Mr. Speaker. I support. Member for Tetu. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity. First of all is to thank uh, the committee um, for a job well done, the joint uh, sitting of the Committee of Parliament uh, of the National Assembly and the Senate. Mr. Speaker, I also rise to support uh, the, uh, the appointment of uh, Douglas Kanja as the Inspector General of Police and to say that uh, Mr. Kanja is a seasoned uh, uh, professional uh, who has grown uh, through the ranks. So we expect him to be accepted very well uh, within the police force unless, uh, you know, unlike in the past where we may have appointed uh, outsiders uh, to that position. Um, Mr. Kanja, I know him uh, very well, and he's a man uh, with very good uh, temperament, and who will become a very good uh, unifying uh, factor, uh, you know, within the police force, uh, or within the police service. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, the, the job of uh, the IG is a tough uh, job, and I hope that he can be able to uh, see through uh, the police uh, reforms that we have been talking about for a very long time, 
we have a lot of work in fighting corruption within the police force, improving the welfare of officers, ensuring a fair promotion policy, um, stopping any extrajudicial actions by police officers. It's a tough job, Mr. Speaker, and we wish him well, and he has our full support if uh, you know, approved by this house. Thank you. Carole Omondi, are you keyed in for this? If you spoke in the morning, then uh, get yourself off the, the radar. Yes, get yourself off the radar. Honorable Sane. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me the opportunity. I want to join my colleagues in giving compliments and support to the nominee for IG. The IG has come through the ranks out of merit. He has all the aptitude, the skills, and the qualifications so required for the duty he is supposed to take over. He's a very humble officer, one who has good listenership. The, the few moments I've had with him were quite uh, interesting. He was able to listen to me and take me through what should be done. He has helped me in several occasions, having come from an insecurity prone area. Uh, the IG is one person who has outstandingly performed in the last days of the Gen Z uh, demonstrations. So I would, in a nutshell, uh, uh, accept in the approval of the IG, Mr. Douglas, for this job. I'm sure he will be one of the best IGs to hold that office. I saw support. Thank you. Hillary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I join all the members who have spoken before me to support the report, the joint report of the Senate and uh, the National Assembly under the abolition leadership of our chair, the Honorable Gabriel Tongoyo. Mr. Speaker, a lot has been said about uh, Mr. Douglas Kanja and everything that has been attested by members is true. But Mr. Speaker, while we praise and demand of Kanja to do reforms in the police service, to take care of his juniors. Mr. Speaker, it is in the honors of this house to make sure that we also avail resources to enable his office to achieve with a budget of over 115 billion and 85% of that budget going to personnel and emoluments, Mr. Speaker, and leaving 15% only for operations. The police will not achieve any meaningful thing, Mr. Speaker. And I'm calling on this House, when the new IG brings requests to improve performance in the National Police Service, let us generously add resources to him so that as we demand services, we also facilitate services by allocating resources, Mr. Speaker. I support. Martin Owino. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I also rise to support the committee led by Togoyo. Mr. Speaker, it appears um, the gentleman is uh, a man of integrity, according to the report, and the eyes of the committee, and we support that. There are only two things, Mr. Speaker, that I would like the gentleman to, to look into when he takes the office. Number one, the idea of um, restoring the image of the police service so that they can gain trust from the public and allow people to present information so that crime can be detected early and managed. That is missing because the acrimony between the police and the people right now. Second, the issue of orders from above, release the police to do what they have been trained, not their, what they are told to do. Mr. Speaker, we realized this when we were on the streets, when somebody just say, what are you doing with those MPs? Tear gas them. Very wrong. Lastly, 
the issue of transferring police force to police service is just a statement. We would like this gentleman to trans trans uh, transfer this from that status to community policing service. If that is done, people will restore the confidence which they have lost in the police force to, to say. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mutunga. Thank you, Honourable Speaker, for the opportunity to also add my voice to this. Honourable Speaker, I commend the committee for a good job done in the inquiry and proposals they have made. So I urge this House to consider approving the appointment of the Mr. Kanja as the ING of Kenya. Honourable Speaker, Mr. Kanja has what it takes. He, is a long -standing, he has long-standing experience. He has requisite education that is needed. He has the professional capacity to do the work. He is also marked levels of maturity. We need a mature person in the police force, and he is a man of God. Honourable Speaker, I attended Mr. Kanja's... Honourable Angela, uh, what's your point of order? Mutunga, take your seat. Give him the mic. Mr. Speaker, I want to bring attention of the chair to page 21. Which chair? The speaker, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, yes. Mr. Speaker. I'm sorry. Uh, on page 21, number 45, about the nominee's background. I'm seeing Mr. Order Speaker. Angela, what is our nominee, vote? sorry. Are you debating or you have a problem? I'm not order? debating. I'm bringing to your attention to make a ruling, Mr. Speaker, whether we are properly debating the right person to be appointed as, uh, as IG. Because this person was born on 22nd September 1963. And the 1963, this is 2024 September, he's already 61. All government officers retire at the age of 60. So are we going to appoint somebody who, has already, who is not even in the system, who has already retired? Is it in order for the House to debate Mutunga, something on. that is out of uh, somebody who has already retired? Mutunga, go on. Honorable Speaker, Mr. Kanja is being appointed on contraction basis, and I think the member is out of order. Honorable Speaker, I, I need to draw a caution, Honorable Speaker, that this... <laughs> Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker that is my opinion, oh, and I'm entitled to an opinion. Honorable Speaker, I believe I'm on the floor, and I'm entitled to an opinion. I have not ruled, I've said in Order, my opinion. Honorable Angela, take your seat. You've made your point. Take your seat. Honorable Speaker, I would like to just draw a question to, uh, to Mr. Kanja. Honorable Speaker, Kenyan police is not one of, one of the most respected. I know, Honorable Speaker, all of us have traveled in this house. And whenever you go to an airport and you're not sure of what to do or where to go, the first people you respect and expect to give you genuine guidance are the police. And that is why we're asking Honorable uh, Mr. Kanja to bring the Kenyan police to that particular level of respect. Honorable Speaker, I would also ask that we, 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 we refrain uh, from aligning our police force. Honorable Speaker, our police, police, policemen are also Kenyans and workers in this particular country, and we need to support them to do their job. Honorable Speaker, I would also like Honorable Kanja to train the police to be credible in whatever they do so that they can be respecting people. I would like to honor our speaker to appeal to this house to consider Honorable Kanja for the appointment. I thank you. Honorable Angela. Honorable Angela, intellectual honesty requires that when you quote something, you quote it fully, not selectively. If you read that whole paragraph, you will have found that the answer you are looking for lies there. And it doesn't require the ruling of the speaker. The committee says, the committee noted that at the time of the hearing, the nominee was 61 years old. Article 245 of the Constitution does not prescribe an age limit for the Inspector General. Further, Section 76 of the National Police Service Act CAP 84 excludes the Inspector General from the retirement age of 60 years. So if you read that paragraph in full, 
you could have had the answer that you are looking for. So that is called intellectual inexactitude. I'll give to my club. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think the problem of my good brother is Wanjala is not is not always available on time because this matter was debated in the morning and concluded. Don't debate Wanjala. Debate so, the thank motion. You, thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Speaker. Number one is that the committee chaired by Honorable Tongoyo did a very good job in a very systematic and summarized the manner for everyone to be able to debate on this matter. So I want to congratulate the, the committee for doing a good job. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, you know I come from a region, the North Rift, where banditry has been a problem. When I came to Parliament, Mr. Speaker, I asked whom do I go and see in the police force, in the police service, who can assist my people. Mr. So Speaker, I was told of one Douglas Kanja. And when reaching his office, Mr. Speaker, I got a first class treatment that I have never been given a treatment like that by police. The treatment was this gentleman walked out to me, so he to come and meet me and, and took me inside. That is a very humble police person in the country, Mr. Speaker. Number two, the fact that President Kenyat uh, Kibaki saw an opportunity, equality in him. He gave him OGW. When uh, Uru Kenyatta gave him another prestigious honor, and William Ruto gave another prestigious honor, so speaker, that tells you this is a man that the country can rely on security matters. So speaker, as I end, what awaits Kanja is digitization of the police services in the country so that to reduce the issues of corruption. Two, protect the NBRs in the country so that they are protected just like the other police. Three, let him go in record as the IG in Kenya. That as uh, Tongoyo, you can now reply. The time I allocated is over. Yes, Wanjala, what is it again? You look restless. Please, Mike. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, recently this country was going almost to a revolution. And one of the issues, Gen Z's, said they don't want people holding those offices, government, oh, civil servant order, offices, order, who are above Take 60 years. Order, Angela. This house operates on the basis of the Constitution, order. Honorable Angela, you are out of order. Tongo, you. Give me the mic. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. And uh, before I reply, I have got only about one or two things to add. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I want to take this opportunity to really sincerely thank all members of this House from uh, both sides of the House for debating uh, this motion uh, with